So this video is inspired by some of the things that I've been seeing on social media about the lawsuit between Mark Wade and Richard Meyer. Um, when Mark Wade's GoFundMe launched a couple days ago, uh, it was kind of weird, both the way that it was described, you know, in the page itself, and the way that some of the comics pros and some of the people who were leaving comments on the GoFundMe were reacting to it. They were reacting to it as if this was some kind of blow against Comicsgate that somehow by setting up this GoFundMe they're going to be fighting racism and bigotry. And in fact, that's how Mark Wade himself, or at least the person that set up the GoFundMe, made it seem, which was that this was Mark Wade standing up against bigotry and that he was, um, that this GoFundMe was going to be an important step in that process. Uh, and uh, for a couple days, I thought that this was really weird. And it, the GoFundMe did fairly well. It's still going on, obviously. It's up to, um, I think, just shy of $75,000 right now. And then after a few days of SJWs and Twitter talking about how amazingly Mark Wade's uh, GoFundMe was doing, Ethan Van Skyver set up a GoFundMe for uh, Richard Meyer slash Diversity in Comics' uh, legal fees. And that one has garnered uh, over $100,000 in just over a day, which is pretty astonishing. Um, and once again, it's people are kind of looking at it the same way, that this is Comic State making a stand, that this is Richard Meyer standing up for uh, not just himself, but for everyone, that this is, once again, that this is kind of a culture war type of thing, and there are a lot of people that seem to be looking at this case as if it's going to give some kind of official victory to one side or the other of this Comicsgate scandal culture war thing. And that's, uh, I mean, that's, I think that's pretty short-sighted, and I think that that's ultimately the sort of thing that's going to lead to disappointment. Um, I'm certainly not a lawyer, I'm certainly not an expert in the law, but uh, there was a time when I thought I was going to be a lawyer, and then I realized I didn't want to go to college, so I went to the military. So I kind of learned a little, you know, I, I sort of read a lot about law and about constitutional law and how the courts think. And, uh, and Diversity in Comics has even mentioned this before, that for the most part, courts tend to stick to very, very narrow, legalistic details. Uh, and within those details, there can be a lot of variables, and there usually are, especially when it comes to civil uh, tort cases like this. But, uh, the, so it's not that this case is going to be over quickly, it might be, but it's, there's no guarantee because there's a lot to look at, there's a lot of evidence that has to come forward, there's a lot of discovery that has to be done, there's a lot of things that has to be done. This is likely going to take at least, you know, a couple years to get fully resolved, and that's assuming that the losing party doesn't appeal it. So the, the main point is that the court is just simply not going to care about Comicsgate. They're, they're not going to care about this culture war thing. They're going to think it's kind of dumb and, <laughs> and not worth their time. Uh, I'm sure that they will look at some of the evidence uh, that came about as a result of this, but mostly they're going to be focused on the very narrow question of did comic book writer Mark Wade use his influence within the industry to uh, interfere with a legitimate business relationship between Richard Meyer and Antarctic Press. And that's really the only question they're going to be looking at. And I don't know if Wade is going to countersue at all. I don't really know what he could countersue for, but like I said, I'm no expert. Um, I don't really even know the first thing about tort law. <laughs> so I don't know what they're going to be looking at, and I don't know um, how this is all going to go. My just from what I have heard and from what I understand, I think that Diversity Comics is in the right in suing him, that uh, this does fall under uh, some kind of, uh, of civil case. Um, Nick Rikesha, uh, a lawyer on YouTube, has gone on at some length about what exactly tortious interference is and how it interferes with long-standing antitrust laws. And he also talks about, interestingly, how businesses and various people in various industries often get away with things that they really legally shouldn't and the only reason they do is because either the affected party just doesn't want to take the time to sue them 
because it does cost money and it does take time, or the court just gives uh, the the offending party the benefit of the doubt when they really shouldn't. Um, and it, it talked more about monopolies and things like that more so than the the tortious interference element of it. But it's an interesting counterpoint when when people that are on Mark Waite's side, so to speak, bring up all these counter examples of people in the regular course of business doing things like this and uh or at least things that seem sort of like this but that's that's not it according to nick rakesha and like i said he's a lawyer and i'm not according to him even if these things do happen regularly that doesn't make it right so him suing wade uh does seem to be correct not only that i do you know i have been watching university comics for a long time for about a six month stretch he was my favorite youtuber i watched every single video he did um Nowadays, I don't watch too many comic speed videos in general, so I got to know how he how he thinks pretty well. And as pissed off as he was with the Antarctic press situation, and as angry as he was with it, I don't think he would genuinely pursue a case unless he felt he had a good one, and that would be after he talked to multiple lawyers and had talked with multiple people, not just Nick Rakesha. So I don't think that. Meyer would go ahead with something like this unless uh, he thought that he had a legitimately good chance of winning it. That doesn't mean he will win it, but there, I, I think that that adds to the credence of it. From what I know of uh, DNC, he, he cares about the money first and foremost, and so he wouldn't uh, go on something like this unless he thought he was going to get more out of it than he had to spend. So, I, I mean, I, I agree with Diversity in Comics, and I agree with... Um, that he he was probably the the target or the the victim of uh, malicious action upon Mark Wade's uh, part. Um, Wade may not see it like that, but it, some stories have been coming out about him that suggest that he's done things sort of similarly underhanded before. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see. But the point of making this video is that people seem to be looking at this as another element of ju the culture war. And I really don't think that that's appropriate because, like I said, the court is just going to focus on the very narrow details of what did or didn't happen. And nobody really knows what did or didn't happen except for the people who were there. <laughs> and how. And they don't know if it broke the law or not except for the court to decide. So, um, you know, he's, he Diversity Comics has raised $100,000 in only a day and a half or whatever it's been. And I, I even kicked in a little bit to that, too, because I, I had to think about it a little bit. But I thought, you know, to the extent that I have a YouTube channel, it's because I piggybacked off of him. <laughs> so I, I do kind of owe him a little bit. You know, I wouldn't have any kind of an audience. I wouldn't have any kind of subscriber base. Uh, nobody would care what I had to say uh, unless I had kind of lumped myself in with that. So I do have him to thank for that. But... At the same time, if you're if you're giving him, you know, there, there's other ways you can make a point by giving people money, you know, um, rather than just simply contributing to a court case that probably won't affect anything in the long run except for Mark Wade's bank account. <laughs> um, like, I mean, I just did a video yesterday. Not too many people watched it. Hopefully, more people watch this video about Indiegogos that need backing. One I really focused on was one called Sporkman. Um, you know, that, you know, it's it's an Indiegogo, it's a comic skate thing, but it's not explicitly political, it's just a fun, you know, hero story. And uh, and it's really struggling with its Indiegogo right now, and it's only got about a week left, so, you know, if you could consider giving money to something like that, or, you know, God forbid, charity, <laughs> or your local church, or something like that. But, uh, I mean, like I said, I helped out the ENC, so I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. But you have to kind of keep it in perspective that, this this is ultimately a personal matter between these two men. It's it's not really a culture war thing. Um, it is really really funny, admittedly, to see that Mark Wade, who is one of the most famous comic book writers uh, currently alive, um, he has books that uh, have never gone out of print and never will go out of print. You know, Kingdom Come is probably going to be in the top fifty graphic novels every single month for the next basically the rest of the publishing industry's lifetime and he's he's incredibly well respected within the industry he's somebody that has a large fan base he's somebody that's you know created storylines that 
uh, have affected uh, comics that are read today, and he can raise a respectable amount of money on an Indigo or on a GoFundMe, but he's getting outraised by a guy who makes uh, dumb YouTube videos while looking at his crotch and making fun of comic books. That is really funny. Um, last I checked, they uh, Wade and Meyer. Wade was actually doing better in terms of the number of backers than DNC was. But DNC had raised substantially more money. Um, and who knows, there may come a point where the backer count of DNC's GoFundMe exceeds that of Wade's GoFundMe. That would be really funny, too. So there is a little bit of shot and food there. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, of that, that sort of thing going on. Um, but... Ultimately, I, I think that looking at this as a facet of the culture war or whatever, or the comic state thing, um, I think that that's a mistake, and I think it's a mistake to get too wrapped up in it. It'll be interesting to see what happens, but, you know, there's more immediate concerns, I think. But, but yeah, just, just, you know, continuing to build up the community and just continuing to build up, um, you know, keep the momentum going for the uh, whatever comic state has managed to accomplish right now. Um, and, uh, yeah, that sort of thing. So this is just a quick video. Uh, tell me what you think. Tell me uh, how you feel about this. Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, in any case, this is Unranked Chevron, signing off.